Today we're gonna learn how to sketch. <laughs> I'm a 30 year animation artist that still loves to draw and teach. One day my twin girls came to me and said, Teach us how to draw. Join Emma and Ellie and myself for Drawing, Drawing with, with Tom Bancroft and, and the, the Twins. twins. So today we're going to learn how to sketch. Um, I've been animating and drawing my whole life. I'm pretty old, so my twin daughters had come to me and said, hey, we're bored, we'd love to learn to do something new. And for the first time ever in my life, they said, we want to have dad teach us how to draw. And so that's how this all came about. I'm glad you guys can join us. Um, but we're really going to hit the basics. And that's my goal with these first eight videos, is to really hit the basics and I can't start anywhere else but with the pencil. And uh, so I have a theory. When I was growing up and um, I went to school, uh, very early, early on, when I was a tiny, tiny little boy, um, they never taught me how to learn a pen how to use a pencil. So girls, what was the first thing you can remember about learning how when somebody taught you how to use a pencil? Like first grade, the little grip thing. Yeah, and what were you doing? Emma, what did they have you draw? Um, I don't know. Nothing, probably because yeah. what they taught you how to do with the first right. pencil was to write. Yeah. Okay, so that's the point. So later on in life, when you actually start drawing in, say, junior high and high school, all you've really been taught how to do, what to do with a pencil is to write, to do calligraphy, writing, right? Kind of cursive, cursive and uh, printing but never how to use it as an artistic tool. And so that's what we're doing today, is we're gonna teach you some basics of how to use a pencil as an art tool, not just as a writing tool. And so it goes down to the basics. So girls, have you ever wondered what, how some pencils have a B and some have an H on them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've seen that? Art pencils usually. I mean like in, in school you use the yellow ones. Yeah. Those always say what? Number two. Number two, right? Okay, so number two, I don't know if you know this, but is right in the middle between the H and the B. It's like a medium. A lot of times a number two is also called HB. So H means hard, and B means black. And so the B side, if you go from H to B, and you go 2B, 3B, 4B, it's getting a darker and darker line, okay? The H, it gets a harder and harder. So if it's 4H, 6H, right, right? As the numbers go up on the H side, it gets harder and harder. And what that means is the line gets kind of lighter and lighter and you get a less soft pencil. So I really like a good soft pencil. Soft is B, right? So on the darker side line and also a lot, uh, a lot more of a soft line. And that has to do with how much uh, clay they actually put into it. And so I like a nice sketchy soft line. So I'm giving it you guys, what, what do you have in front of you here? A 2B. 2B. So I think a 2B is a really good sketching pencil. So let's get to sketching. And what the first thing you need to know is that with sketching, um, it's all about discovery, okay? So let's just draw a circle, okay? I wanna see you guys draw a circle. Okay. So, um, <laughs> took you like two yeah. hours. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing: is sketching isn't about perfection. And so I, I was, you were doing that, Emma. I was noticing that you were drawing, being very careful and trying to get it just right. Yeah. Ellie, you weren't as worried about that, <laughs> obviously. But I, I do like that most of what you did was that you did sort of work around the drawing. You kind of, you didn't just lay it down and do that, right? And then not pick it up right mm -hmm. or maybe even go like halfway and then the other halfway right and you can get a pretty perfect if you practiced a pretty perfect circle but to me that's the difference between a drawing this is a drawing and that's a sketch a sketch is you work at it you do a bunch of little lines and you're jumping around you're jumping to the top you're jumping to the bottom you're jumping to the left to the right mm -hmm. and you're basically what you're doing is you're sculpting the drawing rather than just doing a drawing like you're tracing it. Okay, so this is the heart of sketching, is how you lay down the line. If you're, 
you want to do shorter strokes. You want to you work to uh, jump around a little bit and really find that form because here's the key. With sketching, you're not drawing lines, believe it or not. It's a mentality thing. It's kind of a, a drawing zen. Uh, you're not drawing lines, you're drawing shapes with lines, okay? And so that's where we want to get. That's the goal of, of sketching, is drawing, thinking of shapes. So that even when I'm drawing this, this circle, I'm, I'm sketching it out and I'm kind of sculpting at it. And what I'm really trying to do is create a sphere. Do you guys know what the difference is between a sphere and a circle? Yeah, one straight in. Correct. So yeah, a sphere is a dimensional circle, right? And so, meaning that it has dimension, right? It has a, more of a front, more of a back, right? There's usually kind of a shadow on it too because you're showing that dimension. And so, I think of the sphere even when I'm drawing a circle and that makes me think of it as a dimensional object. And I try and do that whenever I'm drawing anything. And that way we get into, uh, and we'll get later on into dimensionality and trying to show perspective. But today we're just talking about that and so I wanted to hit those things. So uh, we talked about what kind of pencil and now I've said that I like the two B's and I think that's a good one. We haven't talked about erasers. Let's talk a little bit about that. I have two examples here. And this is uh, actually made out of plastic, believe it or not. But this is like a, a, one of those white erasers that are very clean. And then you have the other one. What do you got there? The clown. <laughs> it's a kneaded eraser. Right. So that's what that's called. And it literally, you to clean it, you actually stretch it out like this. And it's uh, this one's a little goopier than it should be. Uh, but in general, that's how you clean it. It's just to stretch it out like that. And then, uh, but what this one is for is to kind of what we call uh, push back your lines so that you can kind of just dab at it or you can kind of do a light erase uh, across it and what that does is it lightens the drawing it doesn't take it all the stain off uh, this one it will get a lot it'll dig a lot deeper it, you can get to the point where uh, depending on how hard you put down your line you could probably get rid of the line almost completely with something like that but for sketching this is all you need I think is because the idea with sketching, and this is really point number four, point four of sketching is the mentality of sketching, which is you shouldn't need eraser. Because what you're doing is you're just, you're trying to find the drawing. You're just doing lines and strokes, trying to find the shape. And if I'm looking at, say, a vase or something, I'm trying to figure out those shapes that make up that vase. And I'm going to sketch that out and I'm going to do it kind of quickly because I'm also like looking back and forth at it, right? Sort of like you're doing figure drawing or something. And so I want to really be able to just judge the size and the shape and, and get that as much as I can. And so, so as I'm getting closer to where I, where I want it, as I'm looking at it, I'm going to start going a little darker. And so that's what a sketch should look like. It should look kind of hairy and a little bit messy, but the deciding lines, there's searching lines and deciding lines. And the searching lines are all those stray lines where you're trying to find the drawing. The deciding lines are where you go a little darker, okay? And that's really, a lot of people always ask me, like, how do you make your, your sketches look like they have life and things like that? And it's really, one of the keys is just not erasing so much. And also, by the way, it makes you draw a lot faster. All right, so one of the, the fourth point I want to make about sketching is how we hold our pencil, okay? Now, Emma, you have kind of a strange way of holding a pencil. Yes. You want to show us how you do it? I like that. Okay. Well, I really like that. That's interesting. So, I'm not going to get on necessarily like how we actually hold it, per se, like which fingers in front and which thumb. No, this thumb. is the correct way. But there is a correct way, yes. This is more the correct way, right? Um, but, uh, I do want to talk about how a pencil tip is used. So. I also like, uh, I don't like to sharpen my pencil really tight, right? Because if it's really, really sharp, that's going to give me a really thin line. That's not great for sketching. And I want that soft, kind of a little bit of a stubby point to it. So I never sharpen it all the way. I sharpen it kind of halfway. And then the other thing I do is it's how you hold it. There's two ways to hold a pencil. And let's try this. So Emma, this might be a little hard for you, but this is, try this where you hold it more like it's a, a paintbrush or something like that. Let's, yeah, see how the bottom is underneath my yeah. palm, right? There you go. Good. Okay, so now <laughs> with this, holding it this way, the, the goal is going to be, and this is how you draw with figure drawing, by the way, when you have charcoal in your hand and there's a, a model up there and you're drawing with your paper here vertically, 
you're doing it like this because the goal is, is you're using your whole arm and you're doing larger drawings, right? Drawing a figure. So we're not gonna do that on this piece of paper, but what I like about drawing like this, there's two things that you get out of it. One is if you wanna really kind of sketch, you're using the side of the pencil. So the pencil's whole touching the paper kind of to, at an angle, right? And so now you really are kind of sculpting, right? You're, you're doing really rough and soft sketching lines, right? And for like character design or really just sort of figuring out uh, a layout or something or a background or a house even, and just doing that initial sketch where you're blocking it out, that's a great way to sketch. Does that kind of feel kind of good? Mm -hmm. And you can turn it too. While you're drawing, turn it slightly so that you're always kind of getting a little, you're sort of sharpening it by, by turning it just a little bit. It'll give the, the chisel on it a little bit more to work with, okay? So that's a fun way to draw, and I, I like to start my sketches like that. And then what I do is when I, once I have all my basic shapes, I like to then turn it the way I would normally use a pencil, and then I can start adding the details. Like if it's a character, that's when I'm going to add the eyes and the nose. and the, I'm, Now that I have those basic shapes the way I want them in a nice sketchy way, now I can go in and add those details. And this is really a way you hold a pencil to get detail, right? You're going to get a little bit sharper line, and that's cool. We are ready to do some nice stuff there. Mm -hmm. So those are the points that I wanted to make is how you pick your pencil, that's number one. Sketching and, and how and it's not about perfection. It's all about how you're how you're trying to find the right line. Oh, that's very nice too. Thank you, thank um, and then what the erasers are for, and that you really don't need an eraser. I want you to start trying to not use your eraser when you're sketching in your sketchbook. Use it less than you used to. Because it's not about drawing per oh shoot I missed that out no now I gotta get it no that's wrong too and if you're drawing like that we're picking it up and pushing putting down the pencil one it's gonna take forever you're gonna get frustrated right I want you to keep that pencil in your hand as much as you can so okay. um, all right so the the other thing we want to do is that um, we are gonna draw a little something which is um, Let's do it. So I want you guys to draw, uh, and we're gonna copy me, okay? I'm gonna do a drawing, I'll put it right here, and then you're gonna copy me. And what that drawing is gonna be is um, a boat. Very simple shapes. Are you supposed to get on the milk? No, I want, I'm gonna do the little quick sketch first. Okay. And uh, it's gonna be all about um, the world's worst boat. <laughs> It's all about accuracy. So um, I'll do a little zoom in on that, but that's the boat. Okay. I'm going to put it right here. And I want you to draw that boat as close as you can to that drawing. So first I need the charcoal part. You can do it that way, or you can draw it. I didn't do it that way, so that's fine if you don't, because it's just basic shapes. Basic. <laughs> But I might talk through uh, while you're drawing this because it's it is really interesting to me see how you both are approaching this drawing. Right away, I see that there's a difference between how Emma is drawing her drawing of that same ship, which is not a good ship, but you know a basic safe ship, and how Ellie is drawing that ship. And one of the big differences is, is that Ellie is trying to draw it about the same size as my drawing, oh. even close to where I placed it, because I placed it kind of on the top left of the yeah, page. I didn't think about that. Well, you're doing it. So I think you did think about it, at least subconsciously. Yeah. And then Emma is looking at that and going, oh, I want to take up the whole page <laughs> and make it even bigger. And I didn't say on purpose, how you needed to approach it. I just wanted you to get as accurate as you could. Okay, good? All right, let me take a look at those. Okay, so you're gonna wanna keep these. Thank you. All right, that's frameable art, of yeah, course. Of so course. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Um, did you get anything out of that? Was that a little bit helpful? Oh, I know yeah. we went over some stuff pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, sure it was. I like the part where you don't use the eraser as much. Mm -hmm. Cause that kind of, I didn't think that was surprising. I think a lot of people don't think about that, Yeah. right? Um, had you heard anything about how you hold your pencil, that that matters? Well, I've seen you do that. Yeah, that no, was I just it. never knew why. Okay. No, I knew I was holding the pencil off. <laughs>
Okay, so as you were drawing that, what I was seeing is that how you were spacing things, right? And how accurate you did that, because when I did my drawing, you notice that my triangle of the cell, the top cell, is at an angle. I did that on purpose. I didn't want to make it straight across the bottom. And then, because I wanted to see if you guys would correct that, think that, oh, that was a mistake, and I'm going to correct it. And Ellie kind of did. She went a little bit straighter here. Yeah. And Emma, you didn't. You kind of tried to keep that as much. Now, mine is at a, a more, uh, a bigger angle. But also, Emma, like, I noticed that both of you guys got off a little bit on how far, how long this line is and this line, right? The distance between this cell and here and your cell in here. And in mine, it's much closer, right? Even though perspective, proportionately, yours is much bigger, this is still a much bigger uh, distance. And then let's talk about proportions. The, one of the biggest things about sketching is getting proportions right. Even in doing this simple, simple drawing, is that you you know both of you did uh kind of different proportions but emma yours were were probably the further stuff so here you can see they're all kind of contained here in this shape and then this is kind of a medium and a little bit smaller and then a, a lot larger shape and then here you have kind of medium but a lot smaller and then even larger so your proportions are a little off while ellie here got a little bit closer with her proportions if you look at the difference between the two, those proportions are about right. And I even see that you tried to do a little bit of perspective to this that I was actually doing. But there was one thing that I did to try and surprise you guys, okay? So that was right here, is that I didn't just draw a, a, a perfect kind of a curved circle like you guys did, or half circle. I This is really the widest area right there, okay? so. I, I made it offset, a lot more of a slope here, and more round right here. What I'm really trying to develop with you guys, not only just what the sketching is and all that, but phase one, beginning of learning how to draw, is really developing that eye. Is that, okay, that shape isn't quite a square. It's a little bit oblong here. It's a little bit rounded on the corners. It's, right, and that you don't just kind of correct it. You take what you see and you really try and interpret that as well as you can. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, this was a lot of fun. I don't know. Did you have fun? Yeah, I learned stuff. All right. Well, it's going to get a little bit more complex because now you have an assignment. Oh, I know. homework. Homework. A little while. homework. Yeah, you're excited about homework these days. Yeah. All right. So I want you to find, and everybody out there too, do this. Go find a lamp in your house because everybody pretty much has a lamp in their house probably. And so I was just trying to find a very common object. Um, and, and if you don't have a lamp, may, maybe make it a sugar bowl, okay? But you guys have lamps in the house. Hopefully find two different lamps. <laughs> but just draw a lamp, and we'll take a look at it um, on the next show. Ooh. And yeah, see how you did. And I, I won't even take pictures, but I want to just kind of capture, and we'll start talking about dimensionality through that drawing, okay? Okay, sounds good. Bye. Well, this has been a lot of fun, and thank you guys for joining us, because this has been Drawing with Tom Bancroft and... The Twins!